Welcome to your Thursday, December 2nd. We're so glad to see you. Uh, Today we're excited to touch some hot buttons, touch some hot spots. Teach me Portuguese. What's good more? Is it bom dia? Bom dia. Bom dia, bom dia. dia. So today, or bom. B-O-M. B-O-M. Bom dia. But it comes out more like bom dia. Bom dia. So coming up on the show, we're going to talk about these Omicron fears around this market crash. That's why we saw stocks take a huge dump uh, overnight. And there's a lot of uh, mainstream media fear mongering that's going on about this Omicron virus. We're hearing about new shutdowns, lockdowns. uh, So we're going to talk about that on the show today. We're also going to be talking about um, uh, the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. Mm -hmm. Some crazy stuff that's coming out from this trial. Naming of names. All kinds of naming of names. Oh, Oh, yeah. David, will we see your name in this trial? David has not been to Epstein Island. Maybe he has. Have you been to Epstein Island? No, I have not. I'm fairly sure you won't see mine. It looked nice, but I was like, there's no way I'm going on that island. (laughs) I went to Fantasy Island. Ah, well, okay. yeah, this is not, this and is I, under, I this is under eight, this is underage fantasy island. Here, right. don't, go <laughs> don't go there. Um, right. We're also going to talk about Roe v. Wade. Uh, this is a, I mean, talk about a hot button issue. I mean, you don't get bigger than this, right? No. As far as an issue, um, talking about abortion, talking about what's the Supreme Court wrapping up oral arguments in this Mississippi case. And boy, we could be in for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. At least that seems to be the way that things the 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 tide is uh, the tide is flowing at the moment. Um, and so, we are we going to be in for like a revolution, a civil war? Some well, did you of- see the story in the newsletter this morning where a poll out of Harvard showed that fifty percent of young Republicans think that we are headed for a civil war? Yeah, con- I members feel of like Congress been in one already. Honestly, just like a cold. Co- I mean. I- I mean, I'm talking violence, though. I'm talking violence. Well, I mean, I think we have. If you look at, like, even the whole Rittenhouse thing, it's like we, we are on the yeah. precipice of, a, of, of that, and, and I think we have been for a long time, and it started out, you know, as a war of, of words and, and ideology, and now it's, it's getting physical, and it's going to get more physical. Yeah, I think you're right. I, you know, but there's a lot of, I mean, pretty high-profile people, members of Congress saying that we were headed for a revolution. Ray Dalio, a multi, you know, billionaire, um, uh, uh, he's, he's accurately predicted a lot of things. Um, he's the author of the book Principles. He's a, he's a brilliant, brilliant businessman. He thinks there's a good chance we're heading for a civil war. Well, you and, know, the sad thing to me on, in that is, is the fact that you have people that are going to be fighting for two sides that don't care about us. So it's like we're fighting against something that doesn't care about us where if we would just unite and fight the bigger power which is both of them combined that's yeah. the only way i think real change would happen yeah just like but michael jackson said like a general strike they don't really care about us exactly <laughs> so um to natalie's book club last night i started the book the war on small business and even in the first chapter my hair's on fire again and i'm pissed off I've never really thought of it this way, why the government is so pro-business. And the author makes this wonder, not wonderful, but awful, but smart point about how the reason that the government has such a war on small business um, is because, Clayton's giving me dirty looks to sit up straight. Yeah, sit up Um, straight. I am sitting up straight. No, you weren't. You were slouching. I did. You were slouching. The reason the government is doing that, that's, I just am short. Um, I'm trying to make a point okay, here. Okay, make your point. Sorry. I don't know whether, you know, I'm going to be like our kids and be like, forget it, mommy. Forget you it, mommy. You weren't listening. You weren't listening. You don't get to hear what happened at school today if you're not. Hey, that's not fair. I want to hear. Yeah. All right, um, so. Okay. The point is that the reason the government want is so in favor of big business is not just because they financially support got members of Congress, but also because it's easier to control just a few large strings rather than everyone who owns their own thing. The government does not want small business. Um, mm. And it showed it during lockdowns when they gave prefer- preferential treatment to large chains rather than small businesses. For instance, um, why could PetSmart continue to do dog grooming when there could be no hairdressers, right? That kind of thing. Why could uh, weed dispensaries stay in business when it was still a pretty new business, right? But the government deems those people necessary and the small business grocer has to shut down, but Target, can't, you know, those kind of things. Um, and she is going to continue to give those points and I'm going to continue to get pissed off and <laughs> talk 
talk well, about it. Well, I think it's that it. mindset of controlling the means. If you can control the means of, you know, the, they're controlling the money, then they can control the where we get stuff. And it's like, because I think it was like 200,000 businesses went under during the pandemic, small businesses. Yeah. And so, and go ahead, please. I was just going to say that because a lot of them couldn't uh, handle the fines and stuff, but this has been going off for a, gone, going on for a long time. You got these big companies that lobby Congress to get things passed that, that benefit them and, and right. hurts the little guy. And so they just can't compete. So right. the book is The War on Small Business, How the Government Used the Pandemic to Crush the Backbone of America by Carol Roth. If you're interested in reading along with me, I always invite you to follow me on Goodreads. Don't ask me why I picked this up. Like, I don't know. It'll but, just piss me off even more. But we should point out, like, this is about what this is happening again right now before our eyes. And so we're going to talk about it on the show today. Like, the lockdowns are, are coming. I mean, they're already happening, guys. And new restrictions. This is a, a way for the government, really, to keep their eye on us. Every government. Yeah. Now, it feels like. Every government. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe not every government. I think there's still some there's, there's still some hope out there. Maybe some of the smaller governments that don't have much of a leg to stand on and they're trying to become, maybe, uh, you know, raise up their profile in the world um, that are trying, you know, for instance, like Singapore and other countries that are trying to take bigger steps. But they don't have these draconian moves that we're seeing from the United States right now. It's really, really troubling. And other Western nations. Uh, yeah. Just in the newsletter, uh, morninginvest.com. If you're not subscribed, we wrote about how they are going to fine elderly people in Greece for not uh, 60 and over for not being vaccinated, which is like Greece has the highest percentage of retired people. They have a higher percentage of retired people than workers. So you can see then why they would want to do this. Right. Right. This country, which, you know, couldn't pay its bills, couldn't figure out. <laughs> so they're going to make some money off of. Yeah. Retired people not being vaccinated. Uh, yeah, I, don't know. I, don't I know had about such that. an epiphany last night. Like I woke up at like one o'clock in the morning, haven't been asleep since, and I've been taking notes. And I got to share. I got to share the information. Uh, maybe we can talk about it on tomorrow's show, Clayton. But just how how corrupt and everything this all is around the the pandemic and how you know like these nine billionaires were created. And I I, I just got like all these thoughts I got to share. But it's it's insane how how much money these people are making off of this globally. Yeah, yeah. and I'm sure it'll. we can talk about this in the, in the beginning. One of our top stories today we'll get to in a moment about uh, these drug companies So, and how much oh. money they're about to make on this too. So, all righty, it is December 2nd. It is December 2nd, right? Yeah. It, it is. is. Let okay. me just make sure I, I'm on my... Um, yeah, are you on your mark? I'm on my car seat. Yep. You yeah. eat your vegetables, everybody's... Okay. You sat properly. Well, yeah. Yesterday, David complained that I start out tall and I get shorter. And I don't slouch because I'm a short person. I never really. So we set the shot out. appropriately, right? Yes. So but the, the booster that I'm on just gets. It, it's it deflates a little bit <laughs> as the show goes on. We need to get to one so of those hard McDonald's ones. I need to just get <laughs> right, the, right. the car seats out of, <laughs> yeah, out of my car for the kids. And I get taller them. during the show. It's well, really Clayton weird. slouches because we're a full foot apart. I'm 5'2 and he's 6'2. So yeah. Clayton always slouches no matter where we go just to sort of make himself less intimidating, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because I'm really intimidating. So I like to slouch to feel like I'm less intimidating. And I never people. slouch because I'm so tiny. So. Yeah, you, you, may, like, you may hear, hi, my name is Clayton, but everybody else hears, my name is Clayton. <laughs> yeah, this is what I do to my, like when my littlest one who doesn't want to go to bed or she's throwing a fit about brushing her teeth, like I will stand up tall. Like I will walk over and be like, Eve? She's like, eh. <laughs> get in bed. Do your uh, King Triton. Oh yeah, because like she- Fred Gwynn when you did that. She knows, you know, she knows Little Mermaid, right? And so, she, we, you know, King Triton and Little Mermaid and I'll go, Ariel? You know, and I get really, <laughs> and she's like, Okay. <laughs> Ariel, have you been to the surface again? <laughs> All right. He would have died. All right, let's get started here, shall we? got a lot of news to get to on this, uh, on this what is it, Thursday? It's Thursday. Thursday. It's okay. Thursday. All right, here we go. Welcome in, everyone. It is December 2nd, Thursday, uh, 2021. I'm Clayton Morris. I'm Natalie Morris. And coming up on today's show, we're going to talk about the Omicron variant and the market crash as a result. Lockdowns, the stock market panicking, dogs and cats living together. It's uh, absolute pandemonium out there. And could the Supreme Court overturn Roe v. Wade and strip abortion rights as they exist right now in the United States? 
Uh, we don't want to get too crazy and extrapolate, but we want to discuss it and try and keep a level head if we can. Yeah, it's going to be an uncomfortable topic. That's what this show is all about, pushing the boundaries uh, and having discussions about things that you won't see in the mainstream media. We're also going to talk about the Epstein uh, dirt that is coming out from the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. And boy, do we have some names. We're going to be talking about some of the names that were named yesterday during the, the trial. Uh, some emotional moments from one of uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's accusers. Uh, really interesting stuff coming out of this trial. And I think we're starting to get some real answers about this thing. And lobbyists do not want you to read a new report that shows that if we do not reduce plastics, we are in big trouble as an environment, uh, our bodies, our health, everything we need to reduce. But lobbyists don't want that. So we're going to talk about why. Yeah, all of that. And what's trending on the internet. We got a little Alec Baldwin news. There's a lot going on. So let's get uncomfortable. It's time for Morning Invest to start. Welcome in, everybody. We've got a daily newsletter we should mention. It is morninginvest.com. It is free. It is, again, we were just named by a Dog Grooming Monthly Magazine as having the best newsletter in the world. So thanks to Dog Grooming Monthly Magazine for naming us as the best newsletter. Again, to sign up for this, you don't want to miss it. Go to morninginvest.com. It's totally free to sign up, and it'll be delivered to your inbox around 6.30 a.m. Eastern time is the goal for us to get it out every day. We write it. Natalie writes it. We spent a lot of time formatting it, working hard on this newsletter to bring you uh, news of the morning just so you can enjoy it over your cup of coffee. Indeed. So this morning, uh, we're not going to talk about this today, but I'll quickly give you a summation. Now, um, Square is now Block. What do you think of that? The company Square, yeah, led by Jack Dorsey, is now Block. Well, because they're moving, focusing more blockchain. on the blockchain, yes. blockchain, uh, cryptocurrency. Yeah. I, I think it's great. You know, That's I, kind of exciting. Plus, Capital One is the first big bank to get rid of overdraft fees. Um, and that's also kind of exciting. So you'll find more exciting news like that, plus the fact that 10% of this year's Christmas tree crops were burned up by the Pacific Northwest heat wave. Um, that's not good. So mm. be very careful that your tree is not too crispy this year. All right, let's talk about our top story this morning, which is Omicron and what happened to the market. So this yesterday, th this was the moment from Dr. Fauci that sent shockwaves through the market. We have the, we had the moment, it was breaking news. He comes out to the microphone and says this, which sent the markets crashing yesterday. Take a listen. As some of you may have heard, the, the California and San Francisco Departments of Public Health and the CDC have confirmed that a recent case of COVID-19 among an individual in California was caused by the Omicron variant. Genomic sequencing was conducted at the University of California at San Francisco, and the sequence was confirmed at the CDC as being consistent with the Omicron variant. So I know there are a lot of questions, but here's what we know right now. The individual was a traveler who returned from South Africa on November the 22nd and tested positive on November the 29th. The individual is self-quarantining and all close contacts have been contacted and all close contacts thus far have tested negative. The individual was fully vaccinated and experienced mild symptoms which are improving at this point. So this is the first confirmed case of COVID-19 caused by the Omicron variant detected in the United States. And as all of you know, because we've been discussing this, this, we knew that it was just a matter of time before the first case of Omicron would be detected in the United States. And as you know, we know, I've been saying it, and my colleagues on the medical team and others have been saying it, we know what we need to do to protect people. Get vaccinated if you're not already vaccinated. Get boosted if you've been vaccinated for more than six months with an mRNA or two months with J&J. &J. And all the other things we've been talking about, about getting your children vaccinated, masking in indoor congregate settings, Etc. Okay. Okay. OMC. I have questions. Yeah. Well, let me just rack up some of the news here first, so okay. we get through some of the major news points on this, and then we'll we'll discuss. Because, okay, take what Dr. Fauci said there. What he said is get vaccinated. Okay, get vaccinated because that's going to stop this. That's how we stop this. Okay. 
Well, then we have news out of South Africa saying that these vaccines aren't going to stop it. In fact, the Moderna vaccine, the head of Moderna came out yesterday and said that, that you know, they don't even have like their current version of it can't fit, can't stop it. So they're going to have a booster that they're working on by March. Okay, so again, put that in your cap for a second. Just sit back on that. So the Moderna vaccine is not going to work against this current newly discovered Omicron variant, or as President Biden calls it, Omicron. Um, I actually like his way, way of saying it a little bit better, Omicron, um, rather than Omicron. Uh, and then you've got uh, you've got these variants um, or these symptoms, according to the South African doctors, saying that these they're unusual. But they're both they're basically mild like these are just like little symptoms nothing to worry about they're really it's what? like really minor and when they say that that oh we're going to have it by march again remember that means that they're going to bypass the the approval process again and and probably get through and, and skip like phase two and three to get it out really fast on something that is showing to be mild yeah so let's get it out real fast we'll make as much money as we can this is the reason why this is the reason why we can't just extend our current contract with the government, right? Moderna, Pfizer, et cetera, and extend our current contract. You've already paid us. So now we'll be just yeah. sort of adding on this whole new vaccine, but you've already paid us. No, no, no. That one doesn't work. So you know what we need to do? We need to, we need to start a new they, one and make, and how more, do they know make that money. Already? How do they know that already? like genomically like they there's still so many questions about this like they're sequencing this and they're already testing it inside the lab to know that this is the efficacy of these vaccines i mean i don't know but listen well, to what this doctor from? listen to this doctor in south africa and she says he's pretty mild like we've seen a lot of these cases now and they're just it's nothing to really it's nothing to worry about and um, these symptoms not the same it's very mild and up until today the patients that we've seen are mild patients mild symptoms um, and uh, the ones that I have seen from the 18th up until now um, all of them recovered none has been admitted no oxygen uh, necessary so far and also no um, so, indication of any oxygen okay so yeah so no oxygen needed mm -hmm. they've recovered and people that are fully vaccinated or not who don't have it at all getting right. this you know so well the patient in san francisco was indeed vaccinated and fully. had also traveled to africa and also had mild symptoms so why were they testing his variant if why was that person i don't actually i don't know if it's a him or a her but why because i don't what know do you mean anyone testing his variant well when you get covid you just get a yes or no right like well, we had covid what, and we didn't know well, because he just traveled there. I think that's the question, right? Were, so, they, were they testing everybody who was slightly sick for the variant? That, that's been my question all along. Is, is like they they always are saying, oh, this is the Delta variant stuff. But like they don't understand what kind of test they have to do to get that information. Everybody's getting swabs and it's yes or no. It's not like they're taking their blood and going in and testing it. Like, when is this happening? And if he was so mild, why did they need to do that? Were they Or were they just... Yes, looking out for, and it's already in Europe. So why why only do those tests on? I just I I don't I'm not calling foul, foul play. I'm just interested because people I know who've had COVID, including myself, none of us that I know have had variant tests. Just yes or no, it's COVID. That's it. Variant. Well, I think again, we, and we don't know, but I mean, I think the fact that this guy was traveling to South Africa, he comes back and he goes to the hospital and he he has signs of COVID. Then did they, he go to the hospital? It, is that what they said or he uh, just he got sick because they said he was mild yeah, why it, would he go if to it the was that hospital? mild why would you go to the hospital like yeah that's a good question um i don't know the person was fully vaccinated is experiencing mild symptoms uh so dr grant colfax uh, public health in san francisco uh confirmed the case how do they confirm it then um and he said in the clip you just played that we did this full sequencing and we confirmed that it was this and he warned us of this several days ago saying i'm not i wouldn't be surprised if it's already here um i know well, i if you see walk, if you walk into a hospital and you're showing very mild cases of anything why would they instantly go to oh my gosh we better test for omnicron that that's omnicron. the thing that just doesn't Right. Makes sense to me. If it's, I, I guess if it's mild one, COVID, it's mild COVID. So if he felt sick and he was at home, he may have called a local health authority and said, well, we're speculating. We don't know. And he may have said, look, I was just in South Africa. There's all of this concern about Omicron. 
I think maybe I need to get a blood test. Maybe I need to get checked. He tells the local health authorities, maybe they come out to his house, they do a blood test, something like that. I mean, we don't know, but it sounds like he didn't go to the hospital uh, at the very least, but they, they, they did say the CA public health officials said that, and the UCSF have det- had detected the Omicron variant. Nevertheless, Markets dumped as a result of this, and governments are now taking taking extraordinary steps. New travel restrictions coming in place in the United States. Uh, new rounds of potential lockdowns um, are are coming to the United States. Uh, we also know that the government uh, the government itself is nearing its possible shutdown, and. Again, on Wednesday, they move one step closer to a possible shutdown. Maybe they can just pretend that they're shutting down for Omicron and not that they're broke and save face. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, I mean, uh, you know, this is the thing how, and a lot of people said in our chat, and I've seen other people saying, this is, you know, a way for the government to, to, uh, to, to control us, to have, have deep tentacles into our lives at every level. I mean, you know, COVID passports, you heard Dr. Fauci saying, you know, we, the way that we're going to stop this is to go out and get boosted, go out and get shots. Mm-hmm. And now there's reports this morning that the, the call might come from the, from the White House that we, would, that we would need to get boosted every year. Yes. Every year. And we know, we know even from the WHO, the WHO on their website specifically. I think specifically David just fell so, out of his chair. I think did David fell that? out of his chair, yeah. <laughs> I, I did. Um, <laughs> that that well, we the, are in a moment right now where we know, according to the WHO, that pretty much everyone is going to get COVID. Just prepare for it. Everyone is going to get it at some point. Prepare for it. And we have to live with this. And all of these variants, if Omicron has 50 different variants inside of mutations, level, how, you're not going to stop it because of Moderna. And so all of this concern on Wall Street and, 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 and governments trying to go into a, not a lockdown yes. mode, it's all a way to consolidate power in the hands of these, these global elites. And now the European Union is stepping up the uh, mandate to vaccinate children by a full week. That starts within the next few weeks. It's, you know... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Even I think level headed people who've been like, okay, we'll get our vaccine. We'll do our best. We'll do the lockdowns. Like at this point, we're all like, this is too conveniently timed for what it is that the governments need. And so, um, I, you know, I'm always like just this close from the, like, what is going, I'm trying to keep a level head here, but it doesn't feel right. I mean, President Biden, as part of this sort of plan, is going to roll out this new, this free at-home testing kits and with these new travel rules. So uh, these new rules, well, the again... testing kits aren't going to show Omicron. I mean, like... Well, yeah. Yeah. Just, so what are you going to test for? They're just going to assume that it all is. Oh, that's Omicron. Everybody that's testing positive now, that's what you got. So we have to have more fear. I, this I is what's being used in the UK, is uh, if you travel abroad, you take a test and you upload it to some site to get back yeah what were you gonna say my my epiphany this morning was i i was thinking like we're always talking about medicare for all and technically during this pandemic that's exactly what we have like just when it comes to vaccines so we we are experiencing medicare for all and how efficiently we can send money to these pharmaceutical companies uh because and and so here's the deal so whenever whenever they say that the government has funded something you guys think about it like this they are taking money out of your pocket okay so we helped the pharmaceutical companies come up with the vaccines we paid for the research we paid for the development that was us and then once they turned around and and we're selling it we're bu- we're buying them too we're buying everybody's vaccine we are all buying for everyone mm-hmm. right so in essence the part that we're missing is somebody to negotiate the dark drug prices because they're paying full price for these vaccines. Like they're selling it for like $2.95 over in other countries, but they're selling it for $20 here and ultimately want to make about $150 per vaccine. So it's like you, you have these companies that during a pandemic, they're, they're getting the money from us. So they're going to maximize their profits. They're going to take as much from us as they possibly can. So yeah. You know, you, you can think like, okay, they very efficiently get these people their money. So so Medicare for all could work. We, we're seeing that right now. But the thing is, it's coming out of our pocket. So they're not only profiting from the, from their work, whatever, they're, they're profiting from us. We are paying for this. So that's just yeah. like, I, my mind is just blown because it's like, if you're taking from the American people, couldn't they have been like, you know what? 
were taken from the American people during a pandemic, we should probably, let's not make any profit on it. Let's show that we really truly care about the virus and we want to get rid of it. Let's just not take a profit until this is all done, you know, worldwide. But no, because these companies are all about profit. So they had to maximize it as much as they could. Yeah. Drives Derek Morris insane. in the chat points out that a shot that protects you for two to six months is not really a vaccine. This is sort of like taking medicine on a regular basis. If right. you have to do it every well, yeah, half of a year that, you know, recently there was a chicken pox outbreak in my daughter's kindergarten class. And I was like, who doesn't have their varicella? Isn't varicella chicken pox? I'm pretty know. sure it is. Um, but our kids have chicken pox vaccines that they got when they were really tiny babies. That that should last, but I think that one lasts your whole year, your whole life. Your I whole believe. Life, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, measles, mumps, rubella, like right. That's the reason we get those because right. they last your whole life. And so, so now we got this these. This was a vaccine we all jumped on because we wanted so badly to end the pandemic. But is well, it? This is, is a good point. Is it really a vaccine if we have to get it all the time? That's medicine. Right. And and the fact that it bypassed several processes of of approval. It's an experiment. At the end of the day, it is just an experiment because it, it didn't go through all the testing that it was supposed to. But my other point that I wanted to make really quick is like, you know, we're, we're giving these drug companies that don't need it all this money to do testing. We're giving them money to buy it. So it's like you've got to look at it like a stimulus. We're basically giving a stimulus to of $19.50 for every single person that needs a vaccine. Here's a stimulus to the business. Here's a stimulus to the business. Here's a stimulus. And then we got fractions. What we get, we got one twelve hundred dollar, we got one six hundred dollar, and then we got another six hundred dollar, I believe, and then stimulus. some, some yeah. unemployment stimulus, right? So while while they're getting all of this stimulus from us, we're stimulating them, but they just drop little crumbs on us every once in a while to keep us quiet. And and it's like people don't really look at it like that. They don't look at how we are stimulating these businesses on a daily basis. You're yeah. yelling. Uh, but I appreciate the passion. That's okay. <laughs> I just wanted to point out. I don't want you to get your blood pressure up. <laughs> oh, it's already up. It's already up. He didn't I sleep know. Last night. I know. Uh, He's and, really. I mean, that's why you know I've been so angry about these stories and why we've been covering these pharmaceutical stories here on the show for such a long time. And this week sp specifically, um, you know, I, I made a point to cover the WTO story that they canceled the meeting. They canceled the meeting in order to try to bring this vaccine to the rest of the world and to open up the patents for the rest of the world and they canceled the meeting so that these and these big pharmaceutical companies wouldn't have gone along with it anyway had they had the meeting so president biden is rolling out this uh, title travel travel rules um, free at home tests and booster shots are elements of what president biden is going to announce this afternoon um, right now the new travel requirements are this that uh, travelers entering the country by air have to test negative with the covid within a day of departure regardless of vaccination status or nationality um, instead of within three days so now it's just one day instead of within three days. Mm -hmm. Extending through March 18th, the requirement that makes uh, masks must be worn on airplanes, trains, and all public transportation. Requiring private health insurance companies to cover 100% of the cost of at-home tests for the coronavirus. Uh, launching a public education campaign to encourage 100 million adults to get booster shots. So again, they're taking our tax dollars and they're gonna do a public inf uh, information campaign so that you go out and get a booster shot where these big drug companies are making billions of dollars off of this well, system. And Sam, Sam just asked a question. He said, if you had a business, would you do it for nothing? I, I, that's not the point. I don't expect these companies to do it for nothing, but they don't have to do it for such a massive profit. It's like this. It's like, imagine if I, Clayton, you were sitting there on the side of the road and, and, and you were starving. You were like at death's door and I was walking by and I had this very nutrient hamburger and I happened to see that you had a $50 bill in your hand. Well, you know what? You give me that $50 and I will let you live, right? It's like mm -hmm. they are taking advantage of people that during a pandemic and, and these companies don't need these profits. They don't need to have that much. Like nine new billionaires were created during the pandemic. Nine new billionaires didn't need to be created. They could have said, we're going to make this just like, let's make it $2 over cost or something like that. Right. But no. Well, that's the whole question. I mean, that's the whole point of trying to lower these prescription drug prices to be you know, on, on par with the rest of the world. That's what we've right. been talking about here. That's what Bernie so who, Sanders who has been trying to push this for. for us? We didn't have right. anybody and, like to negotiate these prices for us. Right. And again, because the FDA and, and the pharmaceutical companies are saying, we're not really going to give you information about how we approved the first round of vaccines, uh, then why would we wait? Why would we take an Omicron booster 
when we're not going to get that information either, right? So we're owed answers to our questions is what we want to say. Yeah. Um, and we're not getting them. And I understand that there's a flu shot every year that's different, that's based on an algorithm, based on what pharmacists think is going to be the next big strain of flu in the following year. Um, that's fine, right? And But at this point... Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel like the same thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at the, what's moving in the markets this morning, right? Okay. Uh, so these are some of the big movers this morning. Uh, Vertex, why are they up so much right now this morning? Like one of the big stocks moving pre-market when the market's about to open in four minutes. Why? Oh, you know why? Because they work with Pfizer. They work with other drug companies in producing the, the vaccine. Look at all these companies at the top of the moving list here. <laughs> you know, is it a surprise? And then look at Moderna because they come out and mention that their vaccine is not efficacious against Omicron, so they're going to have to build a new one. Look at the top movers. There's always the pharmaceutical companies right at the top, making as much money as they can off of this, off of off of these fears in the market. And they're I mean, and they're in their offices celebrating, like they are, like you guys, another variant. We are going to we're going to make a lot more money. Like they celebrate this. Yeah, exactly. And you know, that's why these headlines are sitting on the front page of like CNBC, Omicron likely circulating for longer and more widely than thought experts say Omicron will likely dominate and overwhelm the world in three to six months. Well, over, what does that even mean? Dominate and overwhelm. But then we have a doctor that says eh, it's all mild. It's, it's nothing even really to worry about. Just mild, mild symptoms. No one's on oxygen. They recover very quickly. Well, okay. What about the common cold? The if I cold. hadn't had it, I'd be like, maybe I'll get that one. Take it I, easy. I've Have seen, an easy I've, COVID. <laughs> I've seen people in our chat saying, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, maybe I should get Omicron because right? it'll, it'll inoculate <laughs> me against the, the, the more, I don't know, difficult strain of COVID. There I mean, is well, some comfort what? in having had it. I'm, I'm going to admit that, you know. Yeah. But this it, doctor, this doctor in South Africa says that if you've had COVID now, and he was asked yesterday about this, he's saying now, if you've had COVID, it doesn't matter that it's not, that doesn't uh, protect you against getting Omicron. Oh, well. So well, now you know, I guess. What's, what's funny is the guy that I've been listening to from the very, very beginning of all of this, it predicted this. He was like, you cannot vaccinate yourself out of an active pandemic. What's going to happen if you do is you're going to end up with all of these variants because the, it's going to learn how to bypass it. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what's happening. And he said this back in like 2020 when it first was starting. He's like, this is crazy. They're going to think you can't start vaccinating out, out of this. Yeah. yeah. Well, let us know your thoughts on this. Drop us a comment below. We've got a lot more news to get to here on the show. But first, I want to tell you about our first show sponsor, our friends at Alto IRA. And I love these guys. I've opened my account a few weeks ago. I moved my self-directed IRA into Alto, which allows me now to invest in crypto as a self-directed account because my old custodian for my IRA was so slow and it was going to require all kinds of crazy paperwork just to make one trade. No, 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 no. The way that Alto IRA works, they've actually partnered with Coinbase. So right inside of your Alto IRA account, you can trade crypto right using the Coinbase structure, which is the best of the best when it comes to crypto trading. So if you're thinking of investing in Bitcoin, you know, you can trade without all of the tax headaches if you've got a Roth account. Did you know that the majority of people who are investing in cryptocurrency through a taxable account when they could actually be using an IRA if set up properly? Yeah, and then you avoid paying all of the taxes. Want to truly diversify your retirement portfolio? I do. I discovered an easy way to add Bitcoin and other crypto to an IRA. It's Alto and their crypto IRA. Do you have any investments outside of the stock market? Most of us don't, but many professional investors do. Now there's an easy way to invest just like a pro, like Alto IRA. So what you can do is you can trade, invest without any tax headaches. The easy way is to put crypto in an IRA. It's a game changer. Invest with as little as $10. There's no setup charges. It's, you can create a free account in just a few minutes. I love their interface. Their app is gorgeous, very easy to use. Um, you get secure trading 24-7 with Alto's integration with Coinbase. They have 80 plus coins available including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Cardano, and more. Multiple ways to fund your account. You can move an old 401k over to this account. You can move an old IRA over. Uh, you can do a bunch of that. Any way you want to fund it, totally up to you. Uh, so open an Alto IRA, a crypto IRA account with as little as $10. Just go to altoira.com slash morning. 
that link on the screen. You have to go to that link specifically. That's A L T O I R A dot com slash morning to start investing in cryptocurrency today. Go to Alto IRA dot com slash morning. Our thanks to them for support of Morning Invest. All right. Well, David, are you going to say something? I, heard I just wanted to say really quick, I think Clayton turned my volume up, and so it sounds like I'm yelling because I'm not. I wasn't oh, yelling. I was just You're very, free to yell, though. You but should. But I can't turn your volume up, can I? You control your volume, right? Well, you you turned it up on the roadcaster. Yeah. Because I can hear myself through your headphones, and I normally can't. Oh, okay. So is it okay now? Uh, check, check. Okay. I still hear it, but not as much. All right, I'll turn it I can't wait till we get that new audio interface. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. All right, back to the news. Okay, the news is that the Supreme Court wrapped up oral arguments, or hearing them rather, uh, just yesterday in the abortion case out of Missouri. This is not the case that they took up about Texas. This is about a different law that is specifically challenging the timeline of abortion. Specifically, it's about whether or not abortions can take place after 15 weeks. Uh, as it stands now, it can. I'm sorry, this is in Mississippi. I said Missouri. Wrong M state. I apologize. Um, literally, it's about, or literally, it's about Miss Mississippi's Gestational Age Act. Um, and so... Some of the questions that the uh, conservatively reputed judges, we'll call them, um, seem to me and others that they are willing to challenge this law. And so some of their comments have been extrapolated by those on the left and those on the right, and people are reading the tea leaves, which may or may not be wise at this point because we may not get a ruling until June, but it's interesting to see to talk about, right? What what was said and what the general tone of the hearings were. Recall, we have a conservative majority on the court right now, yeah. six to three. Well, look, there was a lot of hand-wringing over the past few days about these oral arguments. And it's it, there's a lot of people, specifically the liberal media, even writers over at Slate. Um, I saw writers at The Atlantic and others coming out, uh, even if you read this Hill piece this morning, that they're going to overturn Roe v. Wade. That seems to be the consensus among liberal media, that, oh my God, we've, we've, we've lost this battle. Like, we've lost this battle. I'm not saying we, I'm saying this is what the far left is saying. Specifically, if you look at the three different camps, right, there's the pro-abortionists. Like, mm -hmm. they're the ones who are like, they would encourage you to do it any time. Then there's the well, pro no. hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, then I'm not going to just hold on while you say a pro-abortionist think you should just get an abortion whenever you feel you, like it. We've had speeches. There's been women's speeches where they've said, you know, you should use it anytime you want. It, it should just be, and I don't agree with that. And then I, there's pro-choice camp in the middle there. Right. Pro-choice, that's where I fall. And then there's the uh, and then there's the anti uh, anti-abortion. Yes, you know, pro-life. Um, and so I think there's those three camps, and I think. By pushing this in the way that they did on the left, they they had an opportunity for this sort of 15-week gestational period, mm -hmm. right? Which is what many other countries have, by the way. 12 weeks in Europe, almost every European country is 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's, you know, you can't get it. Um, that's enough time, I think, in my humble opinion, three months to figure out if there's any kind of a health-related issue, to speak with a doctor, et cetera. So what the far left wanted on this was, no, no, no. We want to be able to do this up until the end, even like Governor Northam of Virginia, which was crazy to me, was like, even after the baby is born, well, then we can decide if there's some sort of mutational problem, even what after the baby. What does that mean? That means they, they you would, kill a baby? Yeah. So they, they, it was like an all-or-nothing plan. And if you look at the rest of the world, 12 weeks in, uh, in Europe... 15 weeks and so they were arguing for 15 weeks would 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 have actually been better than what you get in Europe. So now because you've decided to have this argument against the Mississippi law, Roe v. Wade could be completely thrown out and turned over and now you're not going to get anything. Forget 15 weeks, now you wouldn't get anything. Yes. It would be outlawed and many many states now would step up and say we're going to follow in we're going to follow in the path of Mississippi. And now, Texas. Roe v. Wade specifically forbids states from having their own laws about abortion. And what it seems like Justice Kavanaugh wants is to throw this back to the states. He, see, he s 
he specifically said, why should this court be an arbiter rather than Congress, the state legislatures, state Supreme Courts, the people being able to resolve this? Uh, which says to me, he does not want this to be a federally protected act, but rather uh, state by state. And red states are at the ready saying, OK, great, we're ready to take this ball back and place some new laws on abortion. And blue states are saying, no, we want everyone to have the same access. Uh, so it is it's is it's a hot button right now. It's yeah. like anyone's. Well, there's yeah, some, yeah. you know, and there's some pretty big interesting in this exchange. So if you go through, I think uh, the National Review did a good job kind of pulling out some of the best exchanges from this. And I think uh, to your point, that was a pretty important exchange, the Brett Kavanaugh exchange, you know, saying, well, I don't see how this is not going to trickle over into uh, other areas. If we, if we, if we allow this at the federal level, then then well, like, why shouldn't this be at a state level? He also pointed out the gun issue and, and some other things, how this wouldn't trickle into uh, privacy rights and other things like that. Um, but there was another exchange I wanted to bring up here, see if I can find it here. Um, it was specifically on, yes, th th this was an exchange specifically on the 15 weeks issue. Um, and this, during the oral arguments, the Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, Chief Justice Roberts asked Julie Rickleman, one of the attorneys arguing against the ban, on for 15 weeks. This is why you can really see where the tea leaves are. If you're reading the tea leaves right now, these types of questions from from uh, Justice Roberts um, and Brett Kavanaugh, you can see where this is leaning. And then Justice Sotomayor, if you read through her, it's like she didn't understand the law. She was really all over the place, and she she misquoted things. She made she was factually wrong on a number of different points. Um, so. If you're watching the Supreme Court right now and you're thinking, is Roe v. Wade going to be overturned? You're leaning towards it being overturned. Anyway, so Julie Rickleman was asked this question about the 15 weeks thing, and I'll put it up here on the screen. So Roberts specifically compared it to the rest of the world. And Roberts noted that the U.S. is one of only seven countries to allow abortion after 20 weeks and pointed out that most European countries limit abortion to far earlier in the pregnancy. Um... I guess before the point of what's the term I'm looking for before the point of um, gestation. No, uh, help me out here. Anyone, David? You know what I'm talking about? Anybody? Conception. Not conception. Um, uh, there's a why can't I think? Anyone? Chat. Is David still here? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. I'm thinking. Um, oh, I can't. Uh, anyone in the chat? Can, it's a turning point before the second trimester. It's like a turning point. What? Am, why pregnancy? can't I think of it? Uh, viability. Viability oh, it just came to my brain. Viability. Yeah, viability of the pregnancy. So in response, Rickleman alleged that this wasn't true. So this was defending this, right? This is on the left side of this argument. Rickleman said that wasn't true and challenged Justice Roberts. So that was incorrect to say that U.S. abortion policy is extreme compared to the rest of the world. She argued that most of Europe allows abortion until viability. That's not true. Nearly every European country that allows abortion at all limits it to the first 12 weeks of pregnancy and a handful allow it to 15 weeks. They do not, as Rickleman suggested, allow abortion after that point for broad social reasons. So this 20 weeks in the United States is more than anywhere else and beyond the point of it having this viability question. Well, at least we're first in something. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but the question is, right, so he brings up a good question about, well, why, why do we need so Justice Roberts asking this really important question, I think, and they, there's no good answer for it if you're trying to defend it, which is why do we need to go beyond 15 weeks? Why, do, why, why would you need to go beyond 15 weeks when in most of the industrialized world has been totally fine handling it well even at 12 weeks? Three and a half months? Well, and the data shows that 90% of all abortions happen before 12 weeks anyway. So right. what is this extra 10%? And I think what people are concerned about is that if you start to move the goalposts, then you can move it at all, right? And so certain people just don't want this goalpost moved at all because as it stands, it does provide choices to women, right? Right. Um, and so, and so that's the hot button, it, button issue now, right? Like, are we... Are we protecting healthy babies past 20 weeks or are we protecting women's rights? And so. But also, we're missing a huge part of this, which is government intervention. So, what now you're saying is if you adhere to this after the 15 week mark, what you're then saying is now I have to go to the federal government and get approval. I've got to get paperwork from the federal government to get approval about having an abortion. 
Like we want the government involved in making that kind of a decision, right? Imagine what that would mean. We're talking about today on the show gov government overreach already. Yes. Right. So, oh, I need to have a, uh, I need to have surgery for something else. I need to have polyp removed or whatever. So now what? I have to get approval from the government? Like why this one procedure, if a woman beyond 15 weeks, now she's going to have to go to the federal. Like, so that's where I draw the line. That's where I'm pro-choice. And I don't want the government sticking their, their paperwork in, you know, in, in, in women's bodies. This is ridiculous. Yes. So, I mean, the government piece of this is important. The 15 week question is, is important, but also I think the overreach of the left here by, by making this like an all or nothing argument, they're going to lose. And they're going to be now you're going to find out that you've yeah. you really you overplayed your hand, I think, on the left. You overplayed your hand and now you're going to have no you're not going to have any ability to uh, get an abortion at a, at a certain level because now you've overplayed your hand and Roe v. Wade gets overturned. Yes, and so, uh, Justice Sotomayor made a comment yesterday saying, look, if we overturn this, there'll be a stench on the court that we cannot get over because everyone will think that we are too political or that we are political in any means. And, it, I, and I think I understand that she's trying to sort of protect this idea of the court, but um, it is political. It's Everything is, right? What it, is it, not political in this country? Right, and so how can we... Pretend, I mean, they are labeled the conservative and the liberal judges. Like, I know that that's not like a, they don't clock in on that, right? But it is already. And, and so it, it, that seemed so utopic to me to say, like, we can't even take this up because we can't afford this because, and, you know, like you mentioned, there may be pieces of Roe v. Wade that we can improve upon, uh, but we cannot pretend that, that we live in this utopic society where not everything is political. No, and I think, you know, the larger problem here is that this, if this gets overturned, what are we looking at as far as a revolution? Uh, you have members of Congress coming out saying uh, that uh, Gene Shaheen says, we will have a revolution in the United States if Roe v. Wade is reversed. And I think she's right. Yes. Um, I think there's an argument to be made that this could be the thing that pushes us over the line. I, I think what people are, are worried about is if you put a, a cap and you move the cap from 15 to 12, then you can move it back to eight, then you can move it back to five. Obviously, that is very concerning. Many women don't know they're pregnant for um, at least 12 weeks. And so it, it's about giving us women the chance to make informed choices about our bodies um, but another, but, but this is, this has nothing to do with the Texas law that allows private citizens to sue other people in regards to any abortion. And that is also going to be heard. So, um, uh, abortions being challenged from all different angles at this point, And it, it's, concerning. Hmm. it's concerning. Well, let us know your thoughts on this story. Uh, it is certainly a hot button issue and one that I wanted to address because these oral arguments wrapping up again, we won't have a decision on this likely until the spring. Uh, but, uh, you know, get ready because I think we could be in for a, uh, a crazy wild ride. Oh, right around the time the, uh, the, uh, uh booster should be ready. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a good time. We'll be coming out of our next lockdown just in time for the Supreme court to announce their results of this case. Um, man, and we won't be allowed out to, to protest. If you're thinking about getting out of the United States. Maybe now's the time. Now's yeah, the time I, to start thinking about it. I have been thinking about it so hard. <laughs> wow. All right. We've got more news to get to here on the show. Let's talk about what's going on in the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. We knew that, obviously, it started this week. We knew that there was going to be bombshell testimony uh, coming from both accusers and defendants and, 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 and everything else. And now we had an accuser testify yesterday. Uh, she was 14 at the time. She said that Jeffrey Epstein brought her to meet Donald Trump when she was 14, though no wrongdoing is alleged. But this is just one of the names that were dropped yesterday uh, during this accuser's uh, testimony, um, and also a pilot for Ghislaine Maxwell, a pilot for Jeffrey Epstein testifying yesterday. Um, and that was also perhaps the biggest name dropping event of the day. Okay, give you us the names. remember what I said last oh, week? Have I have them, but I want you. Yeah. What did you say last week? I said, I said, I guarantee you what's going to happen is they're going to give her a list of people that she's going to be allowed to say. And it's just kind of convenient that it's Donald Trump, like, first, because nobody wants him for president again. 
<laughs> I suppose. And, you know, he has plenty of photos with him and younger girls. And we already know he's admitted to having sex with a porn star. No one cares what kind of like gross stuff he's No, but it, it's easy, to. you know, it th- th- yeah. this drives, like that kind of Trump stuff drives clicks and stuff. And, you know, it's certainly that's, you know, what's going to drive I suppose. media coverage and, and so forth. Um, but, you know, so Jeffrey Epstein's pilot revealed the names of people that was on, that were on his flight uh, flight logs because um, we've been wondering like who who's you know who are on these flights with uh, Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Well, Prince Andrew confirmed on flights. Yes, we knew that. We we had a feeling that Bill Clinton was on a few of them. That is that is confirmed. This by one we learned about yes, thirty seven times or something like that is how many times he was on the flight. Log. Here's another one. Kevin Spacey was a passenger on Epstein's private plane. Interesting. Whole host of interesting characters. Here's another one. Chris Tucker mm-hmm. was on okay. a Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Um, you know, again, Prince Andrew, we knew, confirmed on these planes. And one of the, th- I think it was really interesting that came no, out was that uh, the fort, well, the pilot specifically said, no, no, she, Ghislaine was number two. Like, she was the right hand of everything. Like, she was involved in everything, decision-making, planning. So this idea that she's simply a, a patsy. Yeah. Oh, I don't know anything. I, I, I just was his assistant. I didn't know anything. Well, the accuser, uh, the 14-year-old accuser, who says that she was, he, she saw her involved in sexual acts along with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, what? Yeah, and that she was there coordinating these sexual encounters with Jeffrey Epstein. So she Pepper was directly Potts would involved. not do that. That is not what she, <laughs> that's not the role of an assistant. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Me? Yeah. You're, it, you're oh, right. that it's dirty. That it's, yeah. I don't know. There's part of me that kind was of wants to not list? look. Uh, Bill Gates, I, I, you know, I didn't see his name on this list from this pilot, but we uh-huh. already know that he's, we already know that he's been to the island. Like we but already know that. he has his own, uh, he admitted on 60 Minutes, he's got his own plane. He doesn't need to ride yeah. an Epstein. He, yeah. he paid to keep his name off there. What did he pay? Like 300 million or something? Perhaps <laughs> you just, uh, yeah, if you, uh, take yourself there on your own plane, you're not going to make any flight logs. That yeah. was, that was smart of you. If you did that. But, I mean, you know, he would be playing, you know, this pilot was flying these uh, these young girls to the island. So this pilot admitted, you know, I used to fly these young girls with, you know, to the New Mexico ranch, to his New York City townhouse, down to the private island. By the way, if you're the pilot, don't you think, like, this is wrong? Like Right. Or do you, you get this, this, like, oh, this is my niece? You right. Know, like, do you get some lies about it? Like, what's line. the deal? Yeah. Otherwise, maybe you sh- shouldn't fly that plane there. Like, don't. Take that girl there. His name was uh, Lawrence Paul Visaki Jr. who took the stand. Um, I, it's just so, the whole thing is really uh, creepy. Um, she says, or he says that Ghislaine was his number two. That he, in the hierarchy, um, said that, you know. He built, took orders from her. Yeah, took orders from her. Um, we have a number of, uh, let's see here. Lawrence worked for Epstein as a pilot from 91 to 2019. He testified that Maxwell was about 30 when he met her in 1991 and claimed that we interacted quite often. She was on a lot of flights. The pair uh, remained close into the 2000s. Um, He said that he thought the relationship with Epstein was more personal than business. She was the one who handled most of my finances, my expenses in the office. So, you know, this idea that, uh, you know, that she was just, a simple patsy is not true. Um, Bill Clinton. So there are some stories that one of the reasons that, uh, well, we think about it, that Jeffrey Epstein was killed, I think he was killed, was that he was that he had dirt on Bill Clinton. And that that could have come out, um, and it likely would have come out on Bill Clinton in the trial of Jeffrey Epstein. Convenient that he's suddenly dead. Uh, is Jeffrey yes. Epstein? I mean, so will thing, will that, like that a famous meme like the Clintons? You don't want to mess up, piss off the Clintons. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, look again. What do they know? What does he know about these people uh, yeah. in his little black book? What will come out? I mean, we now know that Bill Clinton was on these flights multiple times, um, and there were underage girls on this island. Maybe his doctor was just prescribing some extra vitamin D. Just know? yeah, need some sunlight. You just need some sunlight. Yeah, and. 
there just happens to be 14 year underage girls nearby. You never know. Yeah. All right, uh, we're going to talk about a new report about how plastics are going to kill us all. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to tell you about our show sponsor over at ScoreMaster. Now, did you know that even a okay credit score can cost you over a hundred thousand dollars over the life of a thirty-year loan? That's because the interest rate that you get on your mortgage depends on how desirable you are as a borrower, and we measure that with credit scores. So you need to make sure that you have the best possible credit score before you go applying for any kind of debt product. That's why you should try ScoreMaster before you apply for any loans. ScoreMaster will take your credit score from okay to great fast. They search out things that should not be on your credit score and are dragging you down, and maybe you just didn't know it. The average user adds 61 points in 20 days or less. Recent COVID surges will keep interest rates low for now, and at and adding 61 points to your score could save you thousands on a home loan if you are one who is taking advantage of those low interest rate loans. The rates will go up soon, so make sure you apply before you uh, apply sorry, sign up for ScoreMaster before you apply for any loans. They, then you can maintain and protect your credit score with 24-7 credit monitoring and a $1 million fraud insurance. It only takes a few minutes to enroll, see your points, get more points, and qualify for the lowest rates. Visit scoremaster.com slash invest. That's scoremaster.com slash invest to get started and take control of your credit score right now. And David, you signed up for ScoreMaster. I did. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I was able to get some. Uh, uh, there was a credit card that I had um, that I canceled, and a year later they charged me an annual fee when I had had closed it. I thought, and I had to call them. Well, then I had to go through ScoreMaster, and it actually just got removed, um, like, like a week ago or so. It finally came off my credit score. So, That's thank awesome. you, ScoreMaster. Awesome. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, a new report out says that the United States can never actually combat global warming without reducing its dependence on plastic. This report comes from the National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicines, and it plainly states if we continue to manufacture plastics, the environmental crisis will just get worse and worse. Scientists are now asking Congress to do something about it. Specifically, they're asking for a cap on plastic productions. Lawmakers have not really shown much appetite for doing this. Recently, the infrastructure bill that was passed has $350 million for more recycling, but nothing to actually slow the production down. Now you might be shocked, shocked I say, to learn that uh, lobbyists for the chemical companies say this report is misleading. We don't need to stop making plastics. What we need to do instead is this idea of advanced recycling, meaning turning plastics into other things like that lawn furniture you might see that actually is quite nice and lasts forever. We have some of that recycled plastic. Yeah, where they take the furniture. old milk bottles and they convert it into Adirondack chairs. Right. Yeah. But uh, really, once those plastics, it takes a lot of uh, greenhouse gas emissions and fossil fuels to make plastics in the first place, right? And if we continue to make plastics, we continue to be hard on the earth. It contributes to air toxins, greenhouse gases. So the report is saying, look, this advanced recycling that we're saying, that is secondary. What we should be doing first is to reduce. Congress has not really shown much appetite for doing this, and it may not be surprising because chemical companies that make plastic have a lot of lobbyists that are expensive and pump a lot of money into your congressional representatives. Now, I will remind you, plastics are not only awful for the earth and they gather into the Great Plastic Reef as well as harm wildlife. Uh, the chemicals from plastics also leach into the environment and harm wildlife, but they also leach into our bodies. So, uh, what can you do? I'm just gonna give you a few things. You can reduce plastic in your house. 
Don't use reusable or single use items if you can avoid it. Uh, like use, get a water bottle instead of buying water bottles. Yes, uh, use the, the type of Tupperware or a, that's a proper noun, but uh, food storage containers should be glass. Do not put plastic in your dishwasher. It leaches chemicals. And talk to your congressional representative and say you would like a cap on plastic production in the U.S. I could keep going about this. Uh, I'll let you talk if you'd like to. I would like to talk, but you know, I just want to take a sort of a macro level look at this and like why we think that all the plastics are being recycled and then we're not. According to Greenpeace, no. in fact, only about nine, about nine percent or eight percent of all plastics are actually recycled. And what does that even mean to to be recycled? Right? There's a big question as to like, I've been hearing this a lot lately. A friend of mine uh, from New Jersey actually was tweeting about this and said, you know, stop using plastics. It is a lie that we're even recycling plastics at all. I thought, hmm. So I started doing some research on it. Wouldn't you know it? He's absolutely right. Very little of uh, of these plastics are actually being recycled. They're permanently like in our landfills, and they're never going anywhere. And then they're causing cancer, all yes. kinds of other problems. And of course, big oil has done gone to great lengths to mislead the public into be into believing plastic would be recycled. That was R2-D2. He thinks he agrees with that. Oh. Um, so Laura uh, Liebrick, a manager at the Rogue Disposal and Recycling in Southern Oregon, uh, says that uh, you know when none of this plastic will actually be turned into new plastic things. All of it gets buried. Containers, bags, packaging, strawberry containers, yogurt cups, it just get, it's, it, it gets it reminds buried. Me, I went to a landfill uh, in... I can't, I can't remember if it was he, in Indiana or here. But anyway, I went to the landfill, and they had the recycling area, and then they had the regular area. And they were literally dumping the recycled stuff out, and it was going out the back. And when I was out there dumping stuff, I looked, and there's a, but all the recycling stuff was out in the same area that I was dumping my stuff. Isn't it sad? Like, we, you know, we teach our kids in school, like, you separate this, put this over here. This is the difference, yeah. right? We, in our house, have three different bins for paper, plastic, glass, right? Well, and you know and what you, it looks like? you like to think you, you're doing good by that. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it, that's, they make you think that, but what does that look like? That looks like all that is is so they can make a little bit of profit on another bin. <laughs> right. Perhaps. And, and, and the bin we have is a plastic bin. Isn't that funny when you think about right. it? Right. And you, a, think about you that. know, a lot of the plastic that we put in the plastic recycle, so my father is in the recycling business. Um, and I had just a tub of guacamole that I had bought at the store and I was going to put it in the plastic recycling in my dad. And it had some residue of guacamole. Like we did not lick the container. And he was like, they won't recycle that unless you rinse it. But I didn't know that, you Who know, so that? I put like, I don't rinse out all my recyclables, but they cannot recycle food or any food that's still in there. And what your local recycle center can and can't do, we just don't know. Right. And so um, I've always been pretty crazy about not heating plastic. I, I've talked to you many times about how I don't have any plastic accoutrement around coffee in the morning. I don't let my kids heat up their food in any plastic. Um, I really try hard not to take the silverware that they give us. Um, my sister-in-law is really good about traveling around with silverware. I don't do that. Um, but I think it's a great idea. Straws, and straws. Like, like yeah, a, I do have travel straws that I take like around. My mom, I think, got for Christmas for you, like the glass straws. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah but I look, travel straws and travel silverware now that I keep in my car. That's nice. Yeah. I, I just, um, there's not, a, we live in Europe and there's not a lot of fast food, so I wasn't using it. Um, and when you go to the mall in Europe, you get real silverware. There's not plastic silverware here. And real plates and real cups, and you put them in a tray and it all gets washed. It's not single use. Um, Every day when I walk on the beach with Grover in the morning and I take him on a walk, it really is upsetting to me because I see like the lids of all of this crap that I'm looking at here on the screen. I see yeah. little pieces of this just washed up on the beach in a line, you know, after a storm, you know, just have like the line where there's like a, a fish, you know, like a, you know, like a shell, a bunch of shells. Yeah. And then, um, and then little pieces of plastic, little yeah. pi that they're floating around in our, in our system that are, you know, fish are eating them, you know, 60 minutes to that whole investigation where those birds stomachs oh are just my God, filled that was with plastics. Awful. Um, and we know that this stuff is stays in the, it's never going away. And this, by the, and, and this industry has lied to us. This industry has lied to us, um, big oil specifically, that plastic would be recycled. So Frontline did an investigative piece 
and and NPR. They spent months digging into internal industry documents and interviewing top former officials. We found that the industry sold the public on an idea that it knew wouldn't work, that the majority of plastic could be and would be recycled, all the while making billions of dollars selling the world new plastic. The industry's awareness that recycling wouldn't keep plastic out of landfills and the environment dates to the program's earliest days, we found. There is serious doubt that recycling plastic can ever be made viable on an economic basis. One industry insider wrote in 1974. I mean, think about <laughs> what year was it that they buried all the ET games? Those weren't recycled. No, yeah, they were in their mid eighties or whatever. We yeah. did a story in the newsletter about how these Garfield phones were <laughs> washing up on this uh, from yeah. a shipwreck in in France. Think um, about, think plastic about you- in the chat says, "Well, if you use water to wash out that guacamole tin, you're negating the effects of the recycling." Um, what I do is I use a, a wash bin. Is like keep a a bowl in the sink. And let that bowl collect with water while I'm washing other dishes. And then I use that sort of waste water to, because I, I've, I've had the same thought. I'm like, well, am I going to now waste resources to clean out something I'm trying to throw out? That's nonsensical too. Right. Um, or also we have a steam dryer, which collects water. So I sometimes keep that water as well to like use for things because you can't really drink it and you shouldn't give it to your plants. Um, but this, it's just like, this is a lot of thought for how to avoid these toxins in our environment and in our bodies. And the fact that Congress won't even make one little move about it, right? If we're really concerned about our health, we have to get boosters all the time, right? But we can eat as much sugar as we want and toxic food that's and single use. Like, there's no profit in that, right? There's profit in us having... There's only, yeah, there's only lobbyists yeah. for it, not against it. Yeah, um, my sister-in-law has recently started a refill business in her hometown. It's called Kemerton Refill and Refresh. Check it out. And um, so what she does now is she gets products in big bins and you bring back your containers, whether they're plastic, glass, or whatever, and you fill it up every time you need new Dawn, uh, not Dawn soap, any dish soap or window cleaner, or all-purpose cleaner or uh, shampoo, conditioner, so that you don't have just one single-use bottle per use. And I think that it's brilliant. And a lot of these uh, refill stores are popping up around. We have to do something, you guys. There are now soaps and conditioners in a bar. You know, we can we can only shop around it so much, though. We should also demand that our lawmakers are on board because this is an existential crisis facing everybody. What's happening to the planet? All life forms well, don't will you, be affected. Don't you kind of find it funny that we so we actually the people are the biggest lobbyists of congress we send them more money than any of these lobbyists yet they don't listen to us they listen to these people who go in there and 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 give them personally money but like they take more of ours it it, it just it makes no sense like they don't listen to the people that are giving them the most money like we have these issues but we can't lobby against we can't lobby against the sugar uh lobby we can't lobby against the plastic lobby like how do we even do that we can't yeah, and I just I, so I sort of money. can't believe it exists. You know, like why should these? Why should somebody lobby on behalf of things that are bad for us? Well, we have, there's a plastic industry lobbyists. I mean, that that's amazing, right? And and you have like you have Dow Chemical, you have Dupont, you have Chevron, you have Exxon, who paid paid millions of dollars in putting out plastics ads in all, for for decades. You know, and they had this environmental message. You know, in these ads that they were putting out there you know, in their lobbying and trade organizations that they were putting out. And they spent tens of millions of dollars on these television ads and ran them for years promoting the benefits of, of plastics that were, end up, they ended up being buried. They were burned or in some cases wound up in the ocean. And only 10% of all plastics ever created have been uh, recycled. 10%. I'm shocked it's that high. I know. I'm surprised too that it's even that high. Um, but just think either it's all dumped in, 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 in landfills. And in fact, some of these groups, they ship it off to China, mm. like China, like yeah. China's like, Hey, we'll take it. So then they bury it there. And then we'll talk about an environmental disaster. Anyway, enough on this. I just can't stand when I walk along the beach and I see like this in the morning when I'm walking Grover and the, like, this is in the sand, these like little pieces of plastic that just they're there seagulls are eating them you know and it's just floating in our food system yeah you know, and just disgusting um my dentist i don't know if this is true or not but our dentist said that if you're going to try and recycle your toothbrush you have to cut the bristles off of it 
because otherwise it'll just be thrown away. I was like, really? So you think really? that your Why? plastic toothbrush can be recycled, but for some reason it can't. Um, but some of the sugar cane ones can, or they mm. break down naturally. I don't know. It's so hard as a consumer, right? Because everything that's sold in Target is going to kill you. That's why we need natural yeah. stuff. Right? Well, and I and I had read somewhere that the, one of the reasons that it's so hard is because of the cost to actually recycle stuff is so high. Um, and you, you have to think, like, if it's something like those toothbrushes, somebody has to individually touch every single one of those if that's the case. Yeah. It's not just a machine that can... Sort of yeah. Robin Mitchell is saying they can make plastic from hemp. And that's a perfect segue... That's a perfect segue to our show sponsor today, our friends at Papa oh, yeah. and Barkley. I'm a huge fan of these guys. So if you're not familiar with Papa and Barkley, pay attention, guys. Um, we're talking about all natural. Let me just show you how this is made, right? This is their... So Papa and Barkley makes amazing, um, all kinds of different amazing products using CBD. Um, and it, it all started out with a son trying to help his father. That's how the company started, Papa. And he had debilitating pain. And so what he wanted to do, he wanted to create a company that he could provide for his father, like putting a balm on his, you know, on his father's like bad back. And it changed his life. It gave him mobility again. And my mother-in-law has been staying with us for a few weeks. She borrowed my Papa and Barkley balm, my CBD balm, because she's got a sore knee that she had surgery a few years ago. And so she's been borrowing it. And she's like, this stuff is great. So like my mother-in-law, I keep looking for my balm because I have a sore shoulder she's and it, she keeps it. stealing it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the balm right there. And I know she's listening. She listens to the show. This is the one I'm talking about. This topical relief. You just rub it on and it just takes away the pain. It's so great. I absolutely love it. Um, that's been my favorite so far. And even the body oil. I've got some of the body oil right here. This one's really nice too. This is the, uh, the body relief CBD oil. Um, see if I can get it closer to the camera there. The body relief oil with CBD. Then they have also got the um, the CBD relief soft gel, and they've got the drops you can take as well. So if you've got like a stress headache or anything like that, David, I know you get migraines. You should give it a yep. try. Maybe uh, we're doing that as well. But the CBD relief balm specifically delivers hours of comfort with simple plant based ingredients. Um, in their at home, you can use it at home in your uh, use test with over 300 participants. Users reported a 40% reduction in daily discomfort in just one week of using the balm. My mom has arthritis in her hands. Um, and Shelly Cali Girl in our chat is wondering do they have gummies? Yes, yes, they do. So you can get those as well. Um, and you want to sleep better. You just want everyday wellness. Maybe you've got some stress headaches. Maybe you've got a sore neck and it will relieve that stress. Just putting this on can be a life changer. So I love that Papa and Barkley. Papa was his dad and his dog Barkley. And he just was like incapacitated. So he created a company to provide some mobility to his father and to take some of the pain away for him. Also, may I point out that those um, containers are not plastic. Yes, these are glass. I had to. <laughs> these are glass and wood, by the way. See, they're all natural. Smart. Glass and wood with a wood lid on there. So I like the, sustainable. It looks like bamboo. Yeah, it does. I think it might even be a bamboo. Um, so anyway, fantastic. And I want you guys to take advantage of getting 20% off right now. This is a perfect like stocking stuffer for someone in your life or just for yourself. Take 20% off right now. Go to Papa and Barkley, CBD.com. Okay. That's the, it's a long URL, but here it is on your screen. Papa and Barkley, CBD.com slash invest to get 20% off. That's P A P A and B-A-R-K-L-E-Y, cbd.com slash invest. That's 20% off for new customers to improve your life through CBD in its purest, cleanest form possible. Our friends at Papa and Barkley. So we're big fans of it in the house. So uh, Wanda, mother-in-law, I, I want my balm. I want my balm back. That's what she's <laughs> getting for her birthday. She's going to have to get that for her birthday. We're going to have to, yeah. Her birthday soon. And my mom wants it too for our arthritis because her hands... Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's what my mom's getting for her birthday also. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, we're going to tell you what's trending before we get out of here. This is the part where we tell you what's going on on the internet, what's being discussed, and you can tell us what you think or participate at these hashtags. Alec Baldwin is trending because he participated in a TV interview, and in it, he claims he did not pull the trigger on the film that killed the cinematographer. There's video the of gun. it. Yeah. He didn't pull the trigger. He said the trigger was pulled. I'll let him say it. Yeah, okay, let him say it. Okay. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. Okay. Well, 
the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. Wait, he says something else. Oh, okay, you, sorry. I don't know. scrub. So you never pull the trigger? No, 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 no. no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. Okay. So he's saying the trigger was pulled, but I didn't pull the trigger. It was already pulled. This doesn't. How did a real bullet get on that set? I have no idea. Someone put a live bullet in a gun, a bullet that wasn't even supposed to be on the property. Okay. Uh, so this interview is being hotly debated. Yeah. How does it? Okay. So he didn't do it. I guess he picked it up and it was pulled. But then, that I don't think that's how a gun works. But I don't know. So if you don't pull it, why does it choose does when it, to project a bullet? Does I'm it not just sure. go off on its own? I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. You have to, because there has to, there, a hammer hits the bullet and sends right. it off, right? So the hammer would have had to been back or something like, maybe it was pre-cocked, like a, you know, like the, I can't, I don't know what kind of gun it is, but you cock it back and it, it sets the hammer back and it doesn't go off until you pull the trigger. So it could have been like, you know, if it bumps something getting picked up or what, like, who knows? Yeah. I don't know, uh, but people are discussing this online. Yeah, it's have... weird. And then he, yeah, if it wasn't him, then who was it? And he asks, how did a live bullet get in the gun on the set? They thought that they like, were going to be rubber bullets or something. I suppose. Well, the blanks, right? So there's, yeah, they don't, the idea is that they, it still hits a casing with gunpowder in it. They tried, actually, it was interesting reading about how they tried for years to, to maybe get rid of the actual casing because, and just... Um, but in then, movies, you but mean? But then you don't get the recoil. If you don't use gunpowder, you don't get the recoil. So it has to actually hit a cap. It's not a bullet that's firing out, but it's still a cap that has gunpowder in it. And you need that recoil, otherwise it looks fake. Actors tried to make it look real, where they'd pull it, but it never looked right. So that's why they've always used gunpowder, because it gives the recoil. Mm, okay. LeBron COVID is trending because the basketball star will not be playing for an undetermined amount of time due to, we're not really sure actually, it seems like he was given a positive COVID test. He uh, was, yeah. Okay, yeah. but it, why then is it undetermined? Shouldn't it be determined? Like you, you get a pretty solid release date when you get COVID. So anyway, people are sad to see him off the court always. Britney Spears is trending because today is her 40th birthday. Happy birthday, Britney. I'm glad you're free. Yeah, yeah. She's um, she's free, and she always, I follow her on Instagram, and this is her thing. She just pushes her hips back, left, right, left, right, in different outfits. <laughs> left, right, left, right. This outfit, oh, this outfit. That's what I she does. I thought I was the only one that did that. No. That's how you dance? Sometimes yeah. in a bikini, sometimes in different dresses. Speedo. Often oh, you're talking in... about her, sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> this is not about you. Banana hammock. <laughs> this is about Brittany. Sometimes in little shirts and belly belly shirts and You're making a case you're making a case for this Instagram account. I think I might kinda follow this Instagram account. You know, for news and stuff. Yeah. I like to watch Brittany. I um you know. I, I'm roughly the same age as her. She's been saying now that she's free she might have a baby. And I'm like, no, girl, don't do that at 40. You already had to. That's yeah, just really my opinion. Because hey, there, in that one, there was a lighter on the floor by her foot. Does she smoke? See it right there? I'm pretty sure she does. There were lots oh, of paparazzi Brittany. photos of her uh, smoking when she had her little breakdown and shaved her head. Um, so maybe. Anyway, I am wishing her a happy 40th birthday. I'm glad she made it this far. I wish her a lot of happiness in her upcoming nuptials. Um, but I think if you're 40 and you want to have a baby, what you should do is set your alarm every 90 minutes for about a week and wake up throughout the night and then see if you want that baby. Well, you're Britney Spears. <laughs> Borrow one for a month. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she has help. She probably has like a wet nurse, you know, she's like, I'm, I'm just sleeping through the night. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. The power of the dog is trending. This is a new Netflix series starring Benedict Cumberbatch as a Montana rancher. And people seem to really like it. I saw it last night advertised to me when I was watching my um, Italian girly show that I like. It's called, uh, oh, that doesn't sound right. I watched this little like- Yeah, I'd like to watch that Italian um, girly show. <laughs> like rom-com type Italian show called Astrologer's Guide to a Broken Heart or something like that. It's in Italian with subtitles. Well, I, I used to live in Montana. I love Benedict Cumberbatch. 
Uh, by the way, if you've never seen him in Sherlock Holmes as Sherlock Holmes, they watch that the uh, the BBC show. I guess it's. A I BBC, think it is a BBC B BBC show. Yeah, he's amazing as Sherlock Holmes, unbelievable. And then of course he's great as Doctor Strange. Uh, he's a great actor. He's a Shakespearean trained actor, by the way. But uh, I like I like uh, westerns, and uh, I love Montana. And so I'm going to be watching this. <laughs> like, it's just a list of things you like. I like horses. I like Sherlock. <laughs> I, I like Benedict Cumberbatch. I like a comfortable shirt. <laughs> is, is I like our Reese's on, Peanut Butter Cup. Yeah. So this is seems it streaming like a good on show. Netflix and at the theater, or is it just the theater? Oh, it's it's a series. I think it's a series oh, on okay. Netflix. Or is it a movie? Because I saw um, that a lot of it said Netflix, but yeah, it's on Netflix. So it's uh, I don't. Let me let me see here. Is it a movie or is it a? It says it won. Okay. It has these awards, but do series get awards? Yeah, I'm let me see sure. these awards at the bottom. Sorry, I'm going to scroll this way. And uh, what is that? Winner oh, in of... select theaters. So okay, we're wrong. It, it does look like it's a movie. Oh, okay. It's rated R, folks. It says so ask films. your mom if you could go. So it's a movie. Okay. In see, select no, theaters. That's, no, that's BS. Netflix should not be doing only theater releases. You want me to subscribe or do you want me to go? But I know? was able to watch it last night. It, it was oh, okay. Yeah, but it was in November. It was in a theater, select theaters. Okay. Oh, okay. Netflix. So it's like art house theaters. You know, they had it in a few art house theaters. See, that's the thing. Like Netflix buys these movies. Apple buys movies. They, they, I mean, they're trying to compete for content. Amazon's buying movies. Yeah. It's like a great Think time to that, be a content creator. Yeah, that's double dipping. They get the box office and then they get the streaming. Yeah. 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 Yeah, smart. Okay, Meghan Markle is trending because a British court... Do you, I, I added this late. Do you have her image? Sorry about that. Um, this was a... Uh, this is to the moment trending because Meghan Markle was trending because a British court sided with her in her privacy lawsuit against the British press. The case revolved around a letter that the Mail on Sunday published. It was a private letter that she wrote to her father... They argued that she has no privacy. They can publish anything they wanted because she's a public figure. She pushed back, and the court sided with her. The mail appealed. Now the court today rejected that appeal. Marco says that the press was playing a game with no rules and that the ruling was a victory not just for her, but for anyone who has ever felt scared to stand up for what's right. Now, they can appeal again, and the question is whether or not this will go to trial because the royal family really does not want her in any kind of public trial. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with that one. But there's still some sort of celebration around there's a lot of intrigue right now about, I was reading, I spent about an hour and a half last night deep diving uh, royal family news, related news. Why are you doing that? Well, I thought you'd be proud of me because you like this stuff. Um, I do, but that doesn't seem like something you would do. I know. Well, because, interesting, there's a lot of one, like, why is the queen standing, like, is the queen standing up against these sort of dark forces that have been that have been driving, the, like, through corporate elites? So we're talking, like, the Bill Gates of the world. We're talking about Prince Andrew, Jeffrey Epstein, and, uh, the, quote, unquote, the organization. And what dirt, like, would come out as a result of the Prince Andrew stuff? So it was the queen. Did, did this come to blows? Did, did Harry and Meghan come to blows with the inner the inner circle the inner sanctum of the royal family over these types of issues like it wasn't just about him wanting to help their marriage and, and make her happy and move to california or wherever no it was something deeper bigger and i saw a couple of people one person came forward and said that that she was of the marigli what is the bloodline the um the forget the name of the bloodline the the, that this whole family is from the Magellan bloodline. Oh, oh, the, the, the royal family is the royal it's family German. bloodline. Yeah, it's a German fr uh, bloodline, and she's like, I'm a, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm of this bloodline, and I can tell you absolutely that this is uh, that there, like, there are big rifts inside the family as to like protecting these powers that be, and is the queen actually trying to. Uh, per, like she's she's actually is the good girl. She's the good woman in this. If arguably the queen could be the one who is not fighting for this like secret organization. What are you talking about? You're I, you're I'm, talking. You're saying things that don't make sense. Like, okay. Without. 
All right, I'm just saying that there are there are questions as to what the royal family is hiding, what connections they have, what are they uh, for like world world like, power? Okay. World power? Yeah. You know? And why did Harry and Meghan actually leave? It wasn't just as simple as, you know, we we just want to have she want, I want my wife to be happy. It was deeper than this. Like we want to be severing our ties to this hmm. this elitist dark forces you know and and what look at prince andrew look at these weird connections inside this family um yes. there's a long history of this so well you know I what know. i found really weird is i was over at starbucks the other day and there was a car parked in the parking lot that had this picture of the queen on the back window <laughs> it's like so she must be doing a great job you can't see it very well but that is the queen of england just waving like this on the back of somebody's car window in the united states yeah, exactly. See, that's part of the conspiracy. What is going on here? Why is the queen driving a, 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 a late model Ford um, to Starbucks? Okay. Inquiring minds want to know. That stuff's not trending. So um, put uh, that in a now. different category, you guys, from my reports mm -hmm. just right now. It's trending yeah. in my studio right now. So. Okay, cool. There's a lot going on. All yeah. right. That's all. Um, tomorrow, we will have a show here, but it will be just Clayton and David. So boys club, women are invited, but no women will be hosting um, because I will be away for the weekend. Before I go and say goodbye to you, would you like to read us Super Chats, David, please? I oh, would indeed. Indeed. Uh, Edna, Edna Crary, $2. Love the new Paranormal Post, Clayton. Thank you. Oh, um, yeah. So if you go to YouTube.com. YouTube.com slash Paranormal up. Post. Yeah. And I've got another one coming out. Uh, i got to get Grim to make the thumbnail if he's watching. Um, I don't know if he's in the chat today or not. But uh, yes. i got to do do a new one today as well. We're going to release. There's a new Thursday edition coming out tonight. So I will, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in that, you're interested in uh, Paranormal, then uh, check it out. YouTube.com slash Paranormal Post is where you go. And I featured a story out of Indiana, out of the mo most cursed house in America. Go check that out. I'm from Indiana, and there were a lot of places like that. Uh, Jacqueline R., no abortion will include even if... No abortion will include even if your baby is found stillborn, a.k.a. dead. A woman will need to wait until body starts normal labor or induced cruel. Um, Carla Becker... I don't really understand that. Yeah, I don't either. Can you repeat it? Just so sure. I, we can give it the... It's no due. abortion will include even if your baby is found stillborn, aka dead. A woman will need to wait until body starts normal later labor or induced cruel. So I'm yeah. not sure. Meaning you can't have like if if inside the body the baby is dead, okay. Under the law, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to remove the dead body out of you. Oh. Oh my gosh. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Wow, honey, you know so much about But that's not but that's not considered an abortion at that point, is it? I know so much about the woman's body. Um because <laughs> you're not because you're not aborting the life, so I don't think that's considered an abortion at that point, is it? Well, she's that saying that dead. they won't do that. Right? Right. That she's, that would be removed like there would be nothing like that's my point in this whole argument is that Democrats or not Democrats, leftists overplayed their hand. And now if Roe v. Wade is overturned, because you wanted to challenge these particular laws, now you're going to go from getting like 15 weeks or 20 weeks to nothing. And you're going to have this situation with a stillborn. In fact, Shelly. Or you have to carry a, a, your stillborn. Your, yeah, your and you have no choice. Child. And you have to wait until the body starts to go through a labor process to try to, ex, you know, to exit from the body before, like, isn't that crazy? I would have to think that that would be an exception because you're not because an abortion is you're 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 aborting a life, you know what I mean? Like so, I I think that there would be a line there. You would think because like I, I don't think of you could have a dead body in you because doesn't it start to break down? I, I don't or know. Like, I guess Lori, Lori brings up a good point. That's not considered an abortion if it's stillborn, but it's I, I don't know. It's still aborting a fetus, whether or not it's alive or not. Right? I mean, I don't know. Uh, Jacqueline R. Oh, wait, sorry. Carla Becker. CBD rules. Love you guys so much. Uh, Very good. Jessica, later term abortions allow for you to make a decision based on whether there is something wrong. Just thought that was an important factoid. Yes. 
Yes. I don't, I, I had the same thought. I don't think we made that clear that if, if something goes wrong in the pregnancy and you feel like it will threaten the life of the mother, these laws would not provide for those types of decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great point. Thank you so much. And that concludes the super chats. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for your kind words today, for being a part of the show. Grover thanks you as well. We'll be back here tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Natalie will be off. I will be here doing the show. Remember, Pet Pick Friday. So if you've got pet photos, you want to send them in, email them to us by emailing them to us at pets at morninginvest.com. There it is on your screen. That's the email address, pets at morninginvest.com. Make sure you include the name of the pet and who you are sending it in so we can include that tomorrow on the show. All right, everyone. We'll see you manana. <laughs>